Hi friends, welcome to my channel. Thank you for all of those who are returning and um, hello to all of those who may be new here. My name is Suzette, also known as Primitive Stitcher. Today is Friday, March 29th, and I haven't been here for a while. No good excuses really other than it's just been busy. It's been quite a year already. I'm anxious for summer, summer break. I'm on my last weekday of spring break, two more months of school, and then I can take a big sigh of relief and relax and enjoy the summer. It has been a bitter cold winter. Today it is rainy and cloudy, gloomy and cold. So what better kind of day than today to do a video? I have a lot to share with you today. Before I get into the stitching, I have some questions on previous videos that I did not answer on the, you know, in the comments. And um, I thought I would try to answer them here. One of the questions was regarding a, an item that I had hanging on that door over Christmas. And Debbie from uh, Disha Crafts had asked if that was a cross stitch. It's not. It is just a painted image on what looked like a miniature door kind of thing. And I found that at probably a yard sale or a thrift store somewhere years ago. It would be a cute cross stitch, but it's not. The second question that when I went back to find it, I couldn't find it, so I apologize if you are the one that asked this question. I also apologize for my very late response. But it was in regards to uh, what tools I use for punch needle. And if I thought, I believe, if I thought if it was worth it to invest in quality tools to begin with. Yes, I do believe it is. Because you want a frame that is going to hold your fabric very taut. The motion of punching tends to loosen the fabric no matter what frame you have it in. So the, the tauter that it can be initially, the better. I use one called the Morgan Lap Stand. And this could be used for cross stitch as well. The particular one that I have is a five and a seven. This being the seven, this being the five. The reason that I prefer this over just a standard hoop is because when you're punching to hold just a regular hoop and, and try to punch at the same time was awkward to me. This you can sit on your lap and have some stability and then you can, you know, I like to place my left hand kind of under the fabric push the fabric up as I'm punching down with the needle. Speaking of needles, I have used some inexpensive ones initially and I felt like they were a waste of money. So I eventually invested in the Ultra Punch. And I know that this company was bought out by Old Tattered Flag. And so you can still get the Ultra Punch Needle through them and it's O-L-D-E Tattered Flag. And you can just look that up online. The reason I like this one so much is because you can set what length you want your fibers to be for punching. So you can have a, you know, a thicker pile or a lower pile. 
So I hope that answers that question. And again, I apologize for not answering that in a more timely manner. Time just got away from me. I don't know. It seems to be the story of my life. Okay, on to stitching. What have I been stitching? Um, lots. I think my last video was early January, I think. And I talked about a Crazy Annie Stitchin um, auto ship of Annie B's folk art country Christmas ornaments. And I don't know if I had finished this one yet, but if I hadn't, here it is. I think this one was called Tree Farm. So then I moved on to the next one, February's, which was called Joyful Top Hat. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch them all and then finish them. And they are very quick stitches. I have not started the third one. I need to get on that because the fourth one is on its way to me as we speak. Uh, the third one is called Ice Skates. I'm sure you all have seen this already. It's a cute one. So I finished those. Then I moved on to a piece that I had started in Mania 2018 by Hands On Design, Stitch Over 2. I had the lower part finished. I just needed to stitch the, the word, the words. So here is my, I've started the FFOing it, but I haven't gotten very far along. And this is stitched on 32 count using the call for threads. And this was just some 32 that I had in my stash. I dyed the top part. And the little wool piece will cover this part here. So when I finished that, I decided to go ahead and move on into my stitch nine challenge. The first piece I selected to work on was Coffee Quaker and I started this originally in April of 2017 with the Coffee Quaker Sal. And then, you know, Stitch Mania came along and I just kind of put this to the side and it didn't get worked on. This is by Heartstring Samplery. And I used 40 Count Stars Hollow, which is the call for, and I used all the called for threads because the, these colors are my colors. So I picked this back up on February, no, sometime in January. I don't know when I picked it up in January, but I finished it on February 1st. And it was fun. And I'm very happy to have that one finished. When I finished that one, I moved on to one called Unfinished by Homespun Elegance. Looks like this. And I believe this is the original. So when I, when I picked this up on February 21st, I believe I only had maybe the top two rows of alphabets done. And you know, it seems like for me, I start something and I'm like, I stitch like a fool to try to get it done. Like, 
the end game is to get pieces finished. And so I think in the past, I've just stitched so quickly. And while I enjoy it, I'm not really taking the time to think about the project and enjoy each and every stitch. This sampler, for whatever reason, um, made me slow down and enjoy each motif that I stitched. I just, I felt such a connection to whatever young girl started this. And in the chart, it explains, you know, that it's unfinished. There's no name or date on it. It's believed that it has some Pennsylvania German um, parts to it but a lot is unknown about this sampler. But I just felt like a connection to this, this stitcher. And this is, if I were going to design a sampler, it would probably be something like this, where there's no planning, it's just stitch as you go and see what happens. So it's a big girl. Let me see if I can, I don't know, can I get the whole thing in there? I love the muted colors. This is stitched on a 40 count linen that I believe was I got from um, Vicki Clayton. I finished this on February 28th and basically what I would do is just stitch a motif or two every night. There's some stitching over one, but primarily it's um, stitched over two using the call for DMCs. So that was finished on February 28th. I decided to go ahead and continue on with my Stitch 9 challenge. Um, and I picked up Vintage Birds by Jeanette Douglas. And this was a um, a Mania 2017 start. I continued working on it in May of 2018, but clearly I don't believe I picked it up after either one of those Manias until February 28th, at which time I stitched on it. This is stitched on 36 count legacy using the call for gentle arts and weeks dye works flosses. I finished this one on March 22nd. I loved uh, stitching the peacock. I left that to the very end. I think when I picked it up, I had this row of letters finished and a couple of these birds and maybe I had started up on this motif. It's just such beautiful colors. And then last but not least, uh, when I finished that one, I picked up the Queen Bee Pincushion by Heartstring Samplery. And this is what it looks like. I picked this up on I finished I finished vintage birds on the 22nd so I picked this up on March 23rd and we have the finish and this is also stitched on 36 count legacy I think when I started it well this was a, a um, 2018 mania start and I just put a little bit of this green in here. It was a quick stitch. 
Love that bee. So that's um, all my finishes. Let me go into my whips, my whip. So then I decided to move on with another Stitch 9 challenge. I'm trying to get as many of my Stitch 9 challenges done before Mania, and you'll see why in a minute. So this one is um, Cherry Hollow Farm by Stacy Nash. This is the photo that came in the little kit. And I started this one May 5th of 2018 for Mania. When I picked it up the other day, I had the bowl of cherries finished. And this complete and maybe this line here. So I am working my way around this border, which is a killer. So I wanted to get that done first. I don't mind stitching the house. I look, I love stitching houses. Borders, mm. this one, it's just, you really, there is a pattern. It's not an easy pattern to follow but it's beautiful. It will be beautiful when it's complete. So I will continue to work on this until it is finished. I may throw in my um, country Christmas ornaments in there somewhere, but I've never been a monogamous, well, haven't for many, many years been a monogamous stitcher. But I'm liking getting these finishes because later in the year, or maybe next year, I'm going to focus on fully finishing items, framing, all that good stuff, because I have a, a basket full of, of things to be fully finished. I want to talk a little bit about haul, uh, but before I do that, I want to give some shout outs a couple of people new people that I've been watching and some shops um, the first one that I've, I've been watching and I something weird is happening with YouTube I swear I am subscribed to people and then they disappear and I'm like oh, they haven't made a video in a long time and then when I do a search for them it's showing that I'm not subscribed. So I don't know what's going on. But I had I thought I had subscribed to Liz at a stitching bug a couple of months ago. I looked her up again last night because I'm like, I haven't seen her for a while. And I was not subscribed. So Liz, a stitching bug, she lives in the UK, in Devon. She has some beautiful pieces. She's just a really, has a calming effect on me. Um, I think she tries to do videos every week, every two weeks. And so she has a nice inspiration to watch her. And she's sitting in her conservatory and it just looks like a peaceful place to stitch. The next one that I've been watching, um, Stitching Alice and Annie. Annie is the mom, Alice is the daughter. They are also in England, they are in Liverpool. And they're just fun, a, a lot of fun to watch. I love the um, relationship they seem to have. And you you might get stitching, you might get crochet, um, sewing, and then of course you get little peaks of Sophie, their beautiful little um, cavalier. So go check them out. And then the last duo that I want to mention, who really need no mention at all, 
are Stitching and Doodah. And I can't think of their names right off the top of my head in this moment, but they are a hoot. Um, they are kindergarten teachers in Kansas. And kudos to you guys uh, to spend all day with kinders. I don't know how you do it, <laughs> but they have wonderful stories to tell. Um, again, I don't know how you do it. I do have some kinders, but I have a nice mix all the way from kindergarten to fifth grade. Gives me a little break from the littles. Um, they have beautiful stitching. I think they are both stitching on the granny is no square or something like that. I'm tempted. I'm so tempted, but that is a huge commitment. I can't wait to see your finishes. So check them out. Again, that's Stitching in Duda. I also want to shout out some stores, some online places. Um, my unfinished chart I picked up at Cobweb Corner a while back. I think I actually even showed it when I in a haul when I when I purchased it and I shouted out Cobweb Corner there. Well, she has started making videos. If you are looking for something that um, from days gone by, that's the place to check. But she has uh, started carrying some uh, newer charts. She also sells Weeks Dye Works and DMC, I believe. So check her out. It's Cobb Web Corner. And that's her channel name as well as her, her online store name. She's always quick to ship. And it's, it's like going shopping, like you're on a, a treasure hunt when you go to her website. You never know what you're gonna find. Um, some, some real treasures though, some real treasures. I wanted to talk about some online shops because I don't have an LNS. Well, my nearest LNS is over two hours away the next one is about, because it's going back roads, is almost five hours away. I miss having an LNS. So I, but when market came around this year, I thought I'm going to contact the two hour away LNS. No, I'm sorry, not the two hour away one, the four plus hour way one and order through them I'm disappointed guys I'm still waiting I'm still waiting for my order I've had to contact them they have not reached out to me and I know it's a busy time of the year but customer service and when we're talking about good customer service I want customer service like Jen from Jen Stitching Niche gives, Teresa from Kitten Stitcher, uh, Trisha from Three Out Threads, Julie at Gulf Coast Stitchers. Those ladies are on it. And I, w I almost wonder if it's because they are stitchers. I, I know because I have lived in a million locations and had a million uh, cross stitch shops. There are people who own cross stitch sh shops who have never cross stitched in their life. I don't understand that. <laughs> so I just want to give shout outs to those smaller shops who know the value of good customer service, the ones that I mentioned. Now, I have a little bit of haul, nothing, I don't think anything new that anyone else hasn't already shown. Um, well, maybe, maybe. 
I'm like I said, I'm still waiting on some from my LNS, but I couldn't pass up Kathy Derrick. I this is not um, new release for market, but I had to have this Rosewood Manor. You can never go wrong with one of her books or charts. Let's try this again. I'm getting over a cold. Yes, as soon as spring break hit, I got a cold. So I had to stop for that. Then when I turn it back on, my storage is full. So then I had to get rid of some stuff. Anyway, back to my um, haul, my Marco haul. I picked this up from uh, Teresa Kogan. And guys, she signed it. There are lots of good recipes in here and some very cute um, pieces to stitch. So if you haven't picked this up, I'm sure Teresa still has several. Um, check it out. Then from... Um, I'm going to go by designer, I think, from Shakespeare's Peddler. Had to get the third in the series. I've done the first two. Could not live without this one. Louisa Horsey, 1836. Beautiful piece. but my absolute favorite, A Savior's Praise. And I told Teresa, I cannot stop looking at this. I just cannot stop. It is an amazing piece of artwork, A Savior's Praise. Cannot wait to stitch that. And that's a border I will enjoy stitching. <laughs> Okay, then I picked up from, I thought there was another piece of, oh, okay, well, Kathy Barrick, I already showed the one, the embroiderous stocking. How can you not love that? I need to start stitching that. I picked up from the Scarlet House, Julia Fletcher, 1847. Adorable. Needlework Press. This Apart from uh, Shakespeare's Peddler, this was one that was a must have on my list of, from the beginning. My children have ties to Maine and actually Bangor, Maine. So that was a must. This is another one that just and I regret not getting the, the large sampler. I will probably end up buying that. It's called the English Garden Sampler by Samplers Not Forgotten. But this one is a piece taken out of that. And of course, Blackbird Designs. I am in love with everything red. So that was a must have. And then from With Thy Needle and Thread, this was another one that it was like, no, I need that. I need that now. And then something that was not a, a market release. I don't even know how or where I saw this. It is by the Queen Bee Handmade. 
just call French ABC Daria. She has an Etsy shop, the Queen Bee Handmade, and this was a PDF download. Again, all the red. Oh, I forgot um, to bring in. I did start back working on a little rag by Teresa. And I'm putting in, every time I work on it, I'm putting in one line of alphabet. I'll show that next time. Oh, okay, so that's all the haul that I have. I have some other other things that were not market that I've already put away. But um, the last thing, and I will do a whole separate video on this another day. I'm, I've been prepping Major League for Stitch Mania. I will tell you, I think that what I'm going to do is not 31. I think I have 27 because on the weekends, I'm going to do a new start every day of the week. But on Saturday and Sunday, I'm going to only have one start for Saturday and Sunday. And I think that totals 27. I will do a separate video maybe um, later in April before, you know, mid-April or so and show you all my goodness. But I'm waiting on one more and that was, oh, is it Ginny? The little the little Wren, I think, from Stacy Nash. Um, but otherwise, I have everything kitted. All the fabric, all the floss. I just need to go through and make my working copies. I just wanted to get ahead of the game because my, in my typical fashion, I <laughs> wait until that last week in April to prepare and then it's a frenzied mess. So this year I thought, no, I'm going to get ahead of the game, get them all kitted up, ready to go. And, um, yeah, now I'm kind of in a frenzy to get some project bags made and some floss books. So thank you for joining me. I hope that I was able to put these videos together in an okay way. I don't know what's going on with my phone. I've never had a storage problem. And when I go in and look, it doesn't say that, I mean, it says I have plenty of storage, but it keeps popping up. Storage is full. I deleted the deleted stuff. So it's not that issue. Anyway, I'm rambling. Thank you for joining me. I hope you all are having a wonderful spring. I'm ready for summer. Let's just bypass spring because mm, I'm over it. I'm over it. But that's a whole nother story. I want sun. I want sunshine. All right, friends. Until next time, which hopefully will not be too long, uh, I wish you all well and happy stitching. Bye for now.